Welcome back trainers. So in this video, we're going to be discussing and talking about my thoughts on the event after the event, as well as the hatching events, the money grab. I hear what you guys are saying, and we're going to go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to be playing some of these uh, uh, Go Battle League, Ultra League battles here with my typical team, Typhlosion, Polyrath, and Licky Licky. I think I do have a Toxicroak and Substitute for the Typhlosion in a couple battles, uh, but for the most part, uh, that's the team I'm going to be using. I'll be fluctuating between Typhlosion and Polyrath for the lead here. Uh, so we'll just let those play out. Some wins, some losses, enjoy. And then I'll probably focus back onto these and uh, see what we have going on and do a little commentary for them. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into my thoughts here. And what I think about it. So these events, is it a bit of overkill? Well, what I personally think is happening with the general public who plays this game is that there's so many events back to back to back. People are losing track. I mean, when we had the Lickitung Raid Day, people were not too aware that you were actually having to evolve it during that time or an after afterwards. Mind that Niantic didn't even tell us that you had an hour afterwards. Otherwise, I would have been frantically evolving uh, during the raid hunt. Uh, so they missed out on the Body Slam uh, Licky Licky, which is a good Pokemon to have currently for the Ultra League, as you're going to see the performance here and in the past. Uh, because it's just there's so many events, people are losing track of what is going on and what is real. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's overkill necessarily, but it's just a little bit too uh, much for everybody to handle. This is a public game, and it is good that they do have event after event to keep it lively, right? And keeping people coming back into the game for whatever reasons for uh, a specific event that is going on. But for the average player for like myself uh, or for you who is a hardcore player uh, and you want to stay up on everything Pokemon Go, but you also have a life and are kind of busy on the side as well, it's going to get much. And you're going to have the fear of missing out, which Niantic is capitalizing on big time. I don't want to speak for them, but I'm just giving you my thoughts here. I could be totally wrong, but fear of missing out. And basically they have all these events and they know the hardcore players are going to participate or are going to want to at least partially participate therefore increasing revenue for all these micro events and you get even more micro transactions for egg incubators right it's absolutely ridiculous uh, and then we can go into the egg events that they're having here uh, so what what can they do to change this and what have we seen well they dropped the Ryalu and seven kilometer eggs for that event as well as the gibble in which you were able to possibly get two gifts or two eggs per open for a gift from your friend and we still have that 20 gift limit. Now, I hatched a bunch of Ryalu. I didn't hatch any Shinies or anything like that. And I'm not going to be complaining about that. But I know a lot of you are very upset that you didn't even hatch a Ryalu or a Gibble. And you still went pretty hard on it. So you hatched somewhere near like 80 to 100. And you only hatched a couple Ryalu or maybe not even any Gibble. I could totally see where you're coming from. And you're participating in every event. Uh, and you feel like your odds are just horrible. Yeah, uh, you know what they should possibly have in this game where there's going to be like some sort of build up. Maybe the shiny charm. They could introduce the shiny charm to increase your shiny odds. But then you're going to think to yourself, well, if we get all these shinies and everybody has everything, what's going to be the point? They're supposed to be rare. I agree there. Uh, I'm just trying to see it from every angle and find a solution here and just discuss it. So uh, another thing that they can do for the eggs is there could be some sort of combo egg hatch combo uh, in which you're just going to continuously hatch the same Pokemon. It keeps track of how many Pokemon of that specific one that you're hatching. And the more you hatch without getting a shiny, the better your chances are of hatching it. Kind of like in the main series games, right? Uh, it's, I don't, the, the hatching doesn't work. I don't know if in Sword and Shield it's like that. I think it is. Uh, it keeps an individual count for every Pokemon. And uh, once, you know, you reach a high number, the probabilities of getting a shiny are going to be higher. They can do that for the wild. They can do that for everything. Just throwing out some thoughts there. If they want to continue to have these egg events and please the general public, uh, they could throw them in, I would say, two kilometer eggs. So the distance is cut down. They could spawn them in the wild because recently they just had this fossil event, right? And it's just filler. Let's be real. It's neat. And I enjoy when they continue to bring things like this to the game. 
Uh, but when it's revolving around incubators, then it gets a bit discouraging for the people who just can't invest in this game or just don't want to invest in it, but still want to enjoy it. And we can go down the road, well, if you want nice things in life, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money. And that's not trying to down talk on anybody or sound like an ass or anything, but it, it, you know that's the way life works sometimes. Um, but they need to cater to everybody at the same time. Maybe spawning them in the wild, changing the spawns. Speaking of that, the whole spotlight hour, which hasn't taken place here yet, if you are not aware, was not a specific Pokemon, but a cluster of all kinds of Pokemon, some that don't even have a shiny. No shiny increase odds were reported. So that's pretty neat. I enjoy that. Whether or not the Pokemon for that spotlight hour is useful or not, it's still a fun idea and it's better than nothing, right? Sometimes we have to really step back and not complain about everything they do. All right, little features are fun. What if they started releasing everything that was rare? Then nothing would be rare, right? I see people saying they want the Gibble Shiny Hour, which come on, I, that's amazing. Of course we want it. But at the same time, let's have let's make Gibble rare. It's probably going to get a community day. But yeah, the egg events are, are going pretty crazy, guys. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm continuously going, and I'm going to tell you this for the fossil event, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. I'll open the eggs from the gifts that I currently do have, but I'm I'm not worried about it. I'll, if I get a shiny, I get a shiny. That's cool. You know, if you're looking for those new Gen 5 fossil Pokemon, then absolutely. You know, this is an A+, plus, right? You can't please everybody all the time, that's for sure. And I'm sure I'm upsetting people. I'm making people happy by saying things that I'm saying right now, but it's just the way the world works. All right, so about the event after event for February, it was pretty crazy, right? You know, it, it was a little bit much at first when they first released the initial um, notes in their blog. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I love news because it's a video for me to make, but at the same time, when they, when they drop so much, it, it's a little overwhelming and a little bit... Uh, too much information in one video. <laughs> I could make them separate, but it's in, you get like seven of these information videos within two days and it's just going to get ridiculous. So let's talk about getting coins. Currently, it's a joke. Uh, before we were able, back in the level 10 gym days, if you were around for that, we were able to collect a decent chunk of free to play coins if you put in the work and we're in those gyms, right? But now it's been reduced to a very tiny bit that you can earn per day, which is you know, something, but at the same time, very low number. I think that needs to be increased because in my experience from playing on these uh, free-to-play kind of apps where you can play and you can do everything basically that everybody else can, but it's going to take a lot longer to progress, right? Because you're going to have to very slowly move through the game because there's always paywalls behind these things to make you want to pay so they can get more money so you can progress and feel like you're with everybody else, right? Exactly. I mean, it's a business. I get it. Uh, but from, let's just give you an example, Jurassic Park Builder back in the day, you know, there was ways to actually earn in-game currency to buy things otherwise not using a credit card or a gift card uh, that you can simply earn coins within that game or whatever the currency is. And it was a good amount. And it was a good amount. And if you played a lot and you played well, then you were rewarded well and you could almost get by without having to pay even when special events happened or if you were looking to just invest in whatever things that cost money in the shop and you were set uh, but with pokemon go it's a very it's difficult uh 15 bucks per um per box for the you know the bigger ones yes you're getting things in there um raid passes and all this stuff and they're premium and and that's just the way it goes but you know if there was a way to get more coins that would please the general public a lot at least more than 50. I mean, that's a little bit stingy, don't you think? Um, but at the end of the day, we have to think about this too. You do not see any in-game ads whatsoever. You do not have to watch an ad before you start playing. You do not have to watch an ad during your gameplay as well after a certain amount of time like a lot of other mobile apps do. And so what we're seeing here is basically like we don't have any sort of in-game ads, so basically they're just going to throw in events kind of in replace for that to make up for that revenue, do you see? Uh, and people are saying, well, maybe they don't even need all this money. You know, it's Niantic. They had made a ton of money. 
Yes, that's true. But at the same time, you ha they have to keep it flowing. They have to keep it going here. I'm trying to be the voice of reason. I don't want to side with either, either Niantic or uh, with the people who are just unreasonable and want everything for free and every shiny to be available at every time and every second, right? So, I mean, you know, it, that, that that's it. That's it, guys. <laughs> and that's uh, why they're having all these events, I think. They're just trying to pick up revenue uh, and kind of build more uh, newer players to come back or at least uh, start playing or people that stop playing when they see all these events happening, uh, especially when they bring crossovers like clone Pokemon, Armor Mewtwo. Those things are appealing to certain crowds of people, even though they're not the best, right? You say the clone uh, Blastoise, Venusaur, and Charizard don't even get for, you know, community day moves or new moves or new stats and they have their old moves. Uh, some people don't care about that. They just like collecting it and it's for the experience and it's fun for them. Um, as opposed to some of us who are like, oh, no community day move. Oh, no new stats. Oh, trash. We don't care. No shiny. Oh, we don't care. Right. Uh, there's a lot of other people out there who are thinking a lot different than we are uh, in that situation. So there you go. Uh, I mean... That you guys, you guys, you guys know I speak the truth, and I'm not trying to protect Niantic by any means. I, I mean, I'm not trying to um, bash them too hard. I'm just trying to uh, give you uh, the insight on what I think here. It is, you know, a, a bit thirsty for money here when it comes to these egg events, personally. Um, but maybe if there was, like we discussed, some sort of kind of way for the game to keep track on how many of those specific pokemon you've encountered you've hatched and there's kind of a ticker build up until you finally have really good odds in getting a shiny possibly and it's not going to make the pokemon become less rare by any means but as so long as that player is continuously hatching and getting good hatches say hatching a bunch of Ryolu, and you hatch a god forbid a hundred <laughs> and you still have a shiny uh what are the odds there right uh, and then eventually you have, you know, really good odds. Let's, let's bring that 100 down to like 30, okay? <laughs> yeah, 30. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a good idea, even for the wild. Like I said, shiny charm, pay for it, kind of like an incense. Wouldn't that be cool? It would last 30 minutes and, you know, you buy it in the shop. Uh, a lot of you are probably grabbing your head like, no, 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 no. Make it a one-time buy or free item. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. If they put a shiny charm in the game, you're definitely going to buy it. And it's definitely going to not be a one-time purchase. It's going to be something like an incense lucky egg star piece for sure. That's just my thoughts if they ever bring it. So we thought the verse seeker was going to be coming into the game. That was, you know, that would be free, but we don't even have that. We just have the, the paywall, the paywall. Let's talk about that now, right? The go battle league and how you have to pay to battle some more. Come on. Are you serious? Niantic, are you watching? Come on. Uh, I mean, you you listened. Let's let's give them that. It was at like 15 battles, and they they shifted it up to 25, which I'm appreciative of. Uh, we just need an open, random, no rank battle. That'd be great. Um, but anyways, the coins to pay to continue to play for the Go Battle League. It, it's a little silly. It's a little silly. Two kilometers from five kilometers, I think. What is it? Three kilometers? I, they brung it down. I pay sometimes and I'm just like, you know what the heck with this? <laughs> I'm going to keep battling right now. And they know that. They know where you're on a good winning streak or if you're on a bad winning streak and you're wanting to get right back in there and, you know, redeem yourself and your pride. <laughs> and you're like, I'm paying right now. Let's keep it going. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I think, sure. If it's getting money, then it's going to get attention. But this is a major feature. So nonetheless, even if it wasn't making money and things were broken, wow, I better hold my breath on that or take that right back. Swallow my words because Go Battle League is really broken. All right. We, are, we all know this and experienced it. And it's still a new feature and they're still working on it. And it's not their fault that people are finding possible exploits to rig battles or it's not even the people doing it it's just simply the game being laggy uh, so you, you have to give them time not everybody's connection is going to be 100 stable and people finding exploits you know not even niantic knows exactly all the exploits that are going on here until they eventually find out and are able to patch that so we'll see we'll see what happens because the raids are still broken the game is still very broken you know, the fix one thing, break 20 others kind of deal going on here. 
and it's just been the same since day one now yeah, we, we're not going to take it all the way back there but you know it was broken took them a while to, to get their footing and once they did you know they started picking things up but there's major features in this game that are still absolutely broken uh, for the amount of payout <laughs> that's happening here do you see fortnite for do you, folks do you or any of your family mem members play fortnite i personally don't once in a while i play you know since they have split screen now uh i play co-op with my son online once in a blue moon but i see him playing there is no bugs you know you, you get stuck at a glitchy map that somebody custom made once in a while maybe but other than that the game runs smooth because it is funded it is a clean game it is a a plus plus free to play game and pokemon go is i, I don't think an a plus plus but it's like an a definitely uh free to play game uh they were on the top charts for gross for a video game like right behind Fortnite, are you kidding? And we're still seeing major bugs. Where am I going with this? This is not a rant. And if you take these videos like kind of as a rant, then I'm sorry, you know? This is what I do on the channel from time to time. I'm just expressing myself and I'm the people's person and we're just talking about it. Uh, the game should be running smooth. I mean, not everything perfect all the time, uh, but for the most part, we should not see a lot of the bugs that we have, right? Generally that, right? But we do. And that's what really irritates me. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I stopped doing hardcore raiding is because they're so broken. You're out in the real world using gas. Currently, it's, it's snowing really hard. And in Anchorage, to, to play Pokemon Go, you, you're going to have to drive around. You can totally walk. You know, have fun freezing your butt off. Uh, in the summertime, you can also walk. But everything's so spread out, you might as well be in a car because you're going to be wasting your time. Uh, so that just came to a halt. Um because you get the people together to do something and then it's like buggy after buggy and everybody leaves frustrated, right? So scratch all that. Uh, so now I stick to not just sticking to PvP and I still do raid challenges if there's something out there, but it's just boring. There's no really, you know, great raids. So it's all about PvP at this point because this is what the focus is on. Um, but we're still experiencing bugs. It's still a new feature and let's hope that they can resolve it and fix some of them to some degree. So yeah guys i hope uh hope you enjoyed that there so these battles uh we di we did win quite a few uh, these are the ones with the snow i do believe are from the morning the morning set so i, I did pretty well and uh this this guy's actually using a typhlosion too so i do believe i win this one here yeah i'm gonna go ahead and take this blast burn and then i'm gonna be able to get to mine and uh finish him off there so yeah uh this game is it's um hmm lately is a, it's it's been grabbing money quite a bit right for those for those egg events but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna partake in the uh, fossil one i don't care when the 40 eggs do come around depending if ryolu is still if it, it's gonna come back into them because currently for the fossil event they're gone they're in 10 kilometers only but they bring it back into them i will definitely try uh definitely for sure i'm not in encouraging it for you too this is just my prerogative i'm going to because i want shiny ryolu uh that's there's no gibble because that was for the other event but well you know that's just uh, what i'm gonna do there i want that ryolu very badly uh, and if i don't get it well then it's my own fault that's my own fault for investing the money and actually trying at this point um you should have known better we all learned our lesson from the regional uh, seven kilometer deal and um and uh, yeah, they kind of expose themselves there. When, yes. And you're like, what do you mean they expose themselves? Well, the rates were horrible and then the rates were worse. Um, and it was just ridiculous. People were going so hard and getting nothing. Yes, like we've discussed, they should be rare, but there comes a point where somebody invests $200, and I'm not talking about myself, that uh, they should eventually get it. And uh, yeah, we could talk about those odds. The odds to get a shiny are like somewhere around 1%. So don't hold your breath, right? Uh, so they don't deserve anything. It doesn't matter if you invest $5,000 in incubators, you still do not earn or deserve a shiny, right? I mean, technically at the end of the day, when it comes to numbers, yeah. I mean, sure, technically, you, you know, you could put it $5,000 in this game and yeah, you know, no shiny. And that's just the way it goes because it's all RNG all RNG based. That's why they need to 
start doing that possible shiny count, you know, uh, seeing how many of a specific Pokemon you've encountered. And once it reaches a threshold, it's not guaranteed, but the odds to find that shiny are going to shrink and shrink and shrink, and you will be able to eventually reach that goal there uh, to the point where you'll have like a one in like 30 chance, which is a lot better than the current high thousands numbers, right? Uh, other than community day numbers and special raid day numbers other than that, but we'll see. We'll see. Wouldn't it be something if they just magically started introducing it very soon, right? <laughs> Anyways, taking a look at this battle, we got Licky Licky in here. I'm pretty sure this is a losing... I don't remember. I, I really don't. So we're going to go Polyrath here. Uh, we got two shields. So do they, though. This is a great position. I think I'm going to shield this because it's going to be an Earthquake... Yep. All right. And we're just going to gain a little more energy and we're going to get off an ice punch here. And another one so they don't take away our health. And at this point, they have a Registeel in the back. So I am looking great. So they've used both of their shields and we still have one. We don't need to shield this up. It's probably going to be a Hydro Cannon. Yes, it is. And then looks like they're switching into Registeel and we're just going to stick it out here. Do this uh, dynamic punch, make a switch into Typhlosion. And they're shieldless at this point. I don't think a Focus Blast is going to be able to take me out, but I still shield it up anyways. Flash Cannon's not going to be very effective. I gain a little bit more energy, not necessary, because the Swampert has pretty much no health. I'm just going to be able to Shadow Claw it away, and we take that win there. So quite a few battles we have going on here, folks. All right, moving it into the next uh, opponent. And I'm kind of done talking about that stuff, so... Yeah, that was my thoughts on it. So they make the switch because we had a great matchup with that Registeel. They switch into Gyarados uh, with Dragon Breath, and we have our Licky Licky here. Good old Licky Licky. It's still enjoying it. Hasn't been letting me down. Like I've said, though, in past videos that I've been using it without Earthquake, there's some situations where I'm like, man, I really wish I had Earthquake. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, I'm really glad I have Shadow Ball. So I'm just going to keep Shadow Ball here because I do have the Typhlosion as well as the Polyrath. Both are going to be great against the steel type so there's no need to overdo it with that earthquake there although going up against the snorlax it'll be hitting a little bit more but better off just going body slam so they switch into togekiss and i remember this battle i make a critical mistake after this i should have switched into typhlosion because we just wasted energy he gained energy and now we're not looking great and we're gonna have to burn a shield and that essentially took the match for me like make me lose the match and, um, yeah, I was trying to, I knew I, I, I screwed up there. Um, they do get my shield here. They, they bait me with flash cannon, but I couldn't risk it. It's my last Pokemon, right? Uh, and so we're just going to go for the blast burn. They're going to shield it up. Almost able to get to another one, but they still have that Pokemon on the back. So well done. Should have made that switch there. But, you know, like I usually say, would have, could have, should have. Everybody could have won, possibly, if it would have, could have, should have. Well, not everybody, but... Now, we were met with a Garchomp. Very interesting. They make an immediate switch, recognizing that's a horrible matchup. And we switch into our Typhlosion here, getting a little bit of energy on our Polyrath. Probably could have done that switch a little bit faster here. Because although we're resisting Grass-types, Venusaur is still a very threatening Pokemon, even to Fire-types, because of the Sludge Bomb and Frenzy Plant actually hurts. Unless you're a Steel-type, a Flying and Fire-type dual type then frenzy plant is basically gonna always hurt you all right it even hurts charizard pretty much right uh, but in the ultra league everything can take more hits and it's tankier which i enjoy because you're able to process things a little bit slower uh give yourself a little bit more time and it's not like boom boom everything's dead what what, what, what just happened right <laughs> uh, especially with blind battles that's where i'm coming at with that uh so we're gonna switch into our polyrath go for the dynamic punch and we're looking fine. We're looking great. We're definitely not going to shield anything because unless they do have Dragon Pulse, which is going to be a legacy, um, then we're fine. And they're just going to hit us with uh, plenty of Surfs here. And I decide to just farm it down because watch what we're going to be able to do here. Uh, get this Venusaur out of here. And a couple more quick moves, a little bit more energy in with the Garchomp. And Garchomp does not want to see ice, but it's going to see some Ice Ice Baby. All right, so anyways, with that said, trainers, thank you for watching. Thank you to all the trainers who are in these battles. I hope you enjoyed my insight on that and a little bit of discussion there, yeah. 
So if you are new, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button if you did enjoy this video, and I will be catching you all next time. Take care.